It's Platt, and today we try a beer inspired by a cocktail. That's next from Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer we have today uh, comes to us from the fine folks at Wild Barrel Brewing. It is their Blue Hawaiian Imperial Cocktail Sour Ale. Kind of a mouthful there. But basically, it's a beer take on the classic cocktail, the Blue Hawaiian. A uh, little background into Wild Barrel Brewing. Wild Barrel Brewing was founded by a couple of gentlemen, Bill Sizak and Chris White. Now, they eventually brought in a uh, third person, a gentleman named Bill Sobieski. Bill was kind of a renowned craft or a home brewer there in the San Diego area, won some competitions. And so they brought him on as head brewer and kind of a third partner. Uh, Wild Barrel was opened in September of 2017 in San Marcos, California. Since then, they've opened a second location in Temecula. Now, it didn't take long for the brewery to gain some traction. In 2018, Beer Advocate listed as one of the top 50 breweries to keep an eye out for in North America. Uh, what Wild Barrel is really known for is their Vice Series of Fruited Kettle Sours. Uh, it's just a whole line of these uh, different uh, uh, soured beers uh, that kind of became a trend a few years back. Uh, they also produce a couple lines of hazy IPAs, West Coast style IPAs, and uh, big pastry stouts. Uh, you can see right there, there's not a lot of traditional brewing. They're not doing, you know, classic pub ales or German box or Hefeweizens or whatever. They're really pushing the boundary, which, again, we, we need that. And that's, that's more kind of a San Diego, West Coast kind of thing anyway. So, um, and again, someone that makes something called Blue Hawaiian, <laughs> you know, you could tell they're pushing the uh, boundaries. If you go online and look at their website, not a ton of information. Their social media doesn't tell a lot about the backstory, stuff like that. I've talked about that just from a marketing sense. I think they're missing an opportunity. But one, I will say this. Once you go on the website, you'll notice they have produced a ton of really interesting beer. And at the end of the day, that's kind of what it's all about. So let's get into uh, some of their other beers. First, they have something called King of Dankness Triple IPA, 12.2% alcohol by volume. It's an unfiltered IPA. This is the classic definition of a real big IPA. Uh, ramp up the alcohol, ramp up the IBUs. Um, if you're just a big hop head that likes high ABV beers, this probably is for you. Uh, next, they have something called Hipsters Love Dairy. I <laughs> think the name's great just on itself. It is a 5.9% ABV uh, sweet milk stout, so there's going to be some lactose powder in there. There's also going to be some oats for kind of a creamy mouthfeel. If you're more of a malt guy like I am, then uh, this might be something uh, for you. Next, they have a beer called Blackberry Jam, 8.4% alcohol by volume. This is an imperial pastry sour. Like I said, they have a whole line of these. They do different fruits, what have you. Uh, one thing, when you do go on their website, you notice there's a lot of imperial uh, beers on there. And basically, the term imperial just means we've bumped up the ABV on whatever style. I'm sure one of these days, I'm going to see a, an imperial section <laughs> beer out there. But that's kind of what how that term's being used. Uh, next is their Vice Mango Sour, 5.2% alcohol by volume. It is a fruited Berliner Weiss. Uh, I'm going to presume that's kind of where they get the vice from. Uh, most beers have a, or most breweries have a flagship beer. Wild Barrel just has a flagship series, and it's this vice series. They have all kinds of different fruits in the uh, vice series. Um, definitely a wide range to play around with. And uh, last but not least is their White Buffalo Stout, 11% alcohol by volume. It's a bourbon barrel aged stout, and they use uh, they get their barrels from Buffalo Trace. So I'm just going to take a leap of logic and say maybe that's where the White Buffalo comes from. It's, again, more of a malt guy. I like these big stouts. I like barrel aged, bourbon barrel aged beers, and I even like Buffalo Trace. So I'm definitely going to keep an eye out uh, for that one. Lastly, one of the things they do at their two locations that I think is kind of unique is they take some of their fruited sours and they'll actually throw into a frozen drink machine and create slushies out of them. Now, I'd seen a few years back at the Nightclub Bar Show where they were selling these machines and doing these quote-unquote beer slushies, but they were doing it with like Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, and they actually had it to where 
you would get a frozen head on top of then the beer. They, they had them almost looking like snow cones or something like that. Uh, the frozen head, terrible idea. Uh, none of the flavor, and it's frozen and doesn't dissipate. Uh, and, and again, those types of beer, I just don't think they're good for this frozen drink concept. But these fruited sours do sound interesting. I think their flavor might lend itself to something like that. So something definitely I want to keep an eye out for. Well, before we try this particular beer, let's check out the stats. All right, so today I thought we'd talk about the concept of beer cocktails. Um, eight, ten years ago when I was uh, doing cocktail competitions, the concept was really just kind of starting off. I think I submitted a, a recipe somewhere where I used a pale ale as a base of a cocktail. A lot of people weren't necessarily doing that at the time. Since then, with just the proliferation of all different kinds of beers, along with, of course, all different kinds of flavored vodkas, liqueurs, bitters, syrup, what have you, the, the possibilities are endless, and I think uh, if I was back in the mixology competitions today, I would definitely have to throw some of these beers in, a, you know, in my toolbox in creating unique cocktails. Now, there's two main groups of these beer cocktails. The first one is basically just a tricked-up beer where we're not adding additional hard spirits or hard liquor in there. And the second category is more of a classic cocktail where either the beer is the backbone or kind of a supplemental flavor to the cocktail unto itself. Now the first group in includes things, uh, probably the best example is the michelada, which if you take a michelada further back, basically you had what was called a red beer. Now 20 something years ago, almost 30 years ago when I started bartending, uh, you always got, it was always a crusty old white guy at the end of the bar. They were never happy. I don't, I've never served someone a red beer that was just a jovial person. I don't know what it is. But anyway, some old guy, hey, give me a red beer. And back then, it's when you had things like Red Dog and uh, Killings Red, stuff like that. And I remember first time someone ordered one, I'm like, oh, you want a Red Dog or something? Kid, where are you, stupid? No, you put tomato in the beer, you idiot. Then I'm like, or Clamato or whatever. I'm like, all right, old timer, let me go fend the one can of Clamato I got back here. I'll blow the dust off and make you a beer, you jerk. Uh, but, and then, of course, it developed in the Michelada, which now has so many different varieties today. Uh, but these things also include the shandy, uh, you know, the classic summer shandy, either with lemon lime soda or just fresh lemonade in there. Uh, drinks like a black and tan, which is half stout, half champagne actually better than you would think and i really the effervescence the champagne brings and kind of the change in the body is kind of a unique uh kind of mouthfeel to it also you have the classic black and tans half guinness half bass uh and so that's that one category of kind of a tricked up beer the second category like says a real actual cocktail and i have a few examples of those uh first is something probably the simplest uh, one of these is called a corrido prohibido Hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, basically, you just take a Mexican lager, put in a Blanco tequila, a little lime juice, a little salt. Uh, you're basically just tricking up, you know, basically throw a shot of Patron in your Corona and you're kind of there. Uh, there are also now the beer margarita things, which is in a similar vein. Either you put just the beer in the margarita or you put the tequila, maybe triple sec and lime in your beer. That's another one of these uh, examples. Uh, next example is more from the mixologist in. It's something called Cold in the Shadows, uh, sh uh, Campari, Chambord, Lime Juice, Honey, generally put into an IPA. And I find this kind of interesting concept. If you think about the hot bitterness of an IPA, but then you think about the sweetness of the Chambord and the honey, this might be an interesting compare contrast kind of cocktail. Uh, I, w I would like to give it a try just to see uh, how it comes out. And lastly, something I definitely, I might have to do a video on because this sounds just like a great idea. It's called Twist and Shout, and basically it's a Guinness Stout real beer float. Now, I've done several videos on real beer floats. I like the concept. Again, I think some ice creams going with, especially your maltier type of beers, I think they pair real well. But this cocktail, they ramp it up even more. They add a little spiced rum to it, a little chocolate liqueur, topped with whipped cream and caramel sauce. And just to take it up another notch, they sprinkle on bacon bits. Yes, bacon bits, that's right. So we definitely might have to try that here on the uh, Plat Art channel. Well, enough about beer cocktails. Let's try a beer inspired by a cocktail.
Well, we can tell by that color it is not a traditional beer. Uh, this is kind of a dirty greenish blue. If you ever had a blue Hawaiian, that blue carousel really, I mean, it's a deep blue. This looks more like kind of dirty water a little bit, but let's give her a try. Oh, that's nice. That's refreshing. Uh, definitely get that pineapple. A little, a little sour. Um, man, that's that's nice, refreshing. Um, definitely, you're not gonna notice any hops on this. Uh, there's no real malt character per se. Um, but not totally far off a classic blue Hawaiian. Um, depending. On how you make your blue wines, you're a little heavy on the rum. This is not going to make that. Um, this is a little more tame version of that, but they're not far off in the cocktail. And uh, yeah, nice, refreshing. Um, not much head retention, but the body's still light enough. There's still enough effervescence there. Well, this goes down easy. Uh, this is definitely something I would drink on the beach, what have you. I, I don't know you drink a ton of these, and it, it's 9% alcohol by volume, so you, you might want to watch out, you know, not drinking a ton of these. But, man, I'd have one or two on the beach, you know. Yeah, that's not bad. Pretty nice, pretty well-executed beer. I'm going to have to keep an eye out for some of their other cocktail sours. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.